Hey guys, welcome back for another episode of the Butterfly Effect podcast. And today, me and Liam are going to be discussing how, well, the announcement of the casting of Frank Stone is going to impact Directive 8020. Now, we did put a poll out, so I'll just read that out to you. So, with the casting of Frank Stone confirmed for a 2024 release, what do you think this means for Directive 8020? We will get to your comments in a few moments, but mate, I'm going to throw it over to you. What do you think it means? If we look at the results of the poll, you know, your, your answers are two super massive games next year, it's 2022 all over again, or Directive 8020 will come out in 2025. Now, uh, 72% versus 28, so we've got some optimistic fans, at least, you know, three quarters of people said that. And I'm not going to lie, mate, I am in the optimism camp. I voted for the majority there. I reckon there will be two games uh, next year. The, the most, like, uh, the biggest reason as to why is because they've done it before. Um, the Quarry came out the same time as The Devil and Me. I don't think it's beyond their powers to do it again. So yeah, I reckon we're going to get two games. I can see it being that this game's going to come out maybe in the summer. Um, I'm going to predict something around June, July. And I reckon we'll get Directive 8020 in maybe November, a bit like, you know, that kind of hallmark, you know, DPA release date month, really. So, yeah, how about yourself, lad? Yeah, so honestly, it sounds like, you know, like I've put in the thing, like you're predicting it's going to be 2022 all over again, like with the quarry and the devil in me. But um, I really do, yeah. Yeah, as for me, I started off optimistically and then I actually just switched and said Directive 8020 will come out in 2025. Um, I think the reason being is because this game got announced so late, my thinking was, when is this game going to come out? Because they're going to want to give enough of a window to promote Directive 8020 and to give the other game enough sort of airtime before people naturally move on from it. I was thinking, you know, unless it's in the, like the first half of next year, maybe... You know, if it was to be any later than that, then it's going to be, you know, stepping on the toes of Directive 8020. And because we've not, I'm trying to think of like things they've actually released, like recently, like that sort of hint at Directive 8020. I don't think we've necessarily had anything. Do correct me if I'm wrong, though. Um, so I was sort of thinking as well, like maybe it will just be the one game a year. It will give them an extra time to perhaps polish the game and also get ahead of schedule you know in terms of the other games in uh, dpa season two so i guess i'm slightly leaning that way but i think the only thing that's holding me back is actually the release of gta 5 because i, th I do think i almost see like the gta announcement it's like when it's gonna sound like a really weird comparison but you know like when moses like just parts the red sea I almost like see GTA as Moses and then all the other game developers as like the Red Sea. Like wherever GTA sits in like the gaming calendar, I don't think other gaming developers are going to want to be near that because I think naturally a lot of people are going to go and get that game. So maybe Directive 8020 gets pulled towards the beginning of 2025. So yeah, I'm thinking along those lines, mate. It's actually a very good point, because GTA 5 will win Game of the Year. Like, it just will. It's supposed to be this massive project that's taken so long to make. People still consistently make videos and talk about GTA 5. And now, ever since this trailer for GTA 6 got dropped, it is all the world's mm -hmm. going to talk about that supermassive games really are going to be on the back shelf in the gaming world. And I know, like... There's people that don't like GTA and they're not going to touch it. Um, and, you know, they're very much two different fan bases. But, yeah, no, I do agree. Like, from a business point of view, you know, you think about your marketing and campaigns and stuff. If your game goes on the shelf, it's going to go, like, really low down in the shelf because there's going to be a whole section for GTA 6. And it's just like, yeah, you know, I, I completely get that, mate. So, yeah, you might be right. Maybe it is right to vote in the minority. But I guess what we'll do, lad, is uh, get some of the fans that commented on the video. Um, so we've got 11 of them, so we'll cherry pick some, and I guess they might sway us, and you know we'll see which camp they sit in, lad. I'm gonna pick a comment here from Sibe Sibes. They said that the casting of Frank Stone and Little Nightmares 3 are already confirmed for next year, so that's three games to look forward to. 
Also, Director of 8020 has been teased a lot the past month and a half, so it'll most likely see a release next year. While Supermassive Games is spread a little thin right now, they have backing from talent at both Behaviour and Bandai Namco Entertainment for their respective games. Similar to how a different team worked with 2K Games to release The Quarry, despite it also releasing the same year as The Devil and Me. And yeah, no, it's very true what Cyber Cybers are saying, that um, it's not just Supermassive Games that are going to have to release two or now three, actually, because you have reminded me that they are playing a role in Little Nightmares 3. Um, but, you know, they do get helped by other things. We don't know how much of this Frank Stone project is going to be Behaviour's work. It could be a 50-50, it could be a 70-30. So I do think we have to bear that in mind, that maybe Supermassive Games are just kind of helping out with some writing elements. We, we really don't know kind of the kind of, like, give or take and the input from them. So yeah, like, what Cyber Cybers is saying is completely true, you know, it might be that we, we do get, like, two or three titles next year, and the workload isn't going to be as steep as them as we think. Absolutely, and obviously that one thing is workload, isn't it? But I think, like we was mentioning before, like, there's a business side to it where they wouldn't want to step on it on their own feet, really, because of releasing projects all in a similar window. So, because they, they want to clearly maximise as much money. I know this is getting a little bit business heavy now, but it is true that they're going to want to try and maximise as much money of you know from it as they possibly can. But it is right that similar thing with Expanse, wasn't it? With Telltale and um, Deck Nine, they that was a sort of a collab thing. You can't quite tell who did more or who did what, but yeah, I think it's a fair comment. We'll have to have to uh, wait and see. So I'm now going to pick up a comment from Casey, who says, if it's 2025, then it has no hope. GTA 6 might be out March 2025, and that will just overshadow it. Hoping for a 2024 release date, Halloween anyway. Now, yeah, I mean, again, I sort of, yeah, that was what I was saying before like, about GTA 6. Like, the thing is, and like, if we just revisit that topic for a second, like, could you imagine if, GTA 6 was because they do these big games do typically come out towards the end of the year didn't they so let's just say it's like quarter four October November time could you imagine if Supermassive put out Frank Stone and then they put out Directive 8020 towards the end of next year the following year you've got GTA so that means whatever the second game in the DPA season is You'd want to almost pull it back, wouldn't you? You'd either want to knock it further down the road, or you'd want to pull it back to earlier on in the year. And I just wonder if that's like too tight of a release schedule. So I do think that like the GTA 6 will sort of have an impact in some way. So I do agree with you, Casey. Yeah, and I'm actually glad you've done it. I, for some reason, thought GTA 6 was coming out in 2024, but you have reminded me, Casey, that it is 2025. I reckon the best business strategy for Supermassive Games would be to release the Frank Stone thing in kind of like maybe the summer of next year, um, Direct of 8020 in October, November, and then if you're right in saying GTA 6 comes out in March, because GTA 5 actually released in 2013 in September, so I think they're going to really have to tread lightly on what the next EPA project is going to be because it might be that they take another year out in 2025. I doubt it because there will be in the thick of a season, but it, it might just be that they have to take it on the chin and have their sixth DPA game kind of really affected by, you know, GTA 6. And then it might just be one that does less well in the marketing or potentially sales as well. So we will have to see. Now, very good point there, Casey. Um, we've got a comment here from Juster3105, who says, I remain hopeful for a nice double release, but it doesn't. if it doesn't turn out that way, I'm still super hyped, since DVD is pretty much the only multiplayer game I consistently play. I mean, here, here, Juster, um, I'm not really a multiplayer gamer, but I have really binged DVD in the past. They're completely different, a story-based game developer with a multiplayer game developer, predominantly anyway. So yeah, no, um, I'm with you there, and I'm also super optimistic. Uh, like we say, they did it before in 2022, and I'm hoping it will happen again in 2024. Okay, so we've got another comment here from Tatjana who says, both are possible, I think, but considering that both The Quarry and The Devil in Me felt unfinished at parts, I'm not sure I want two games in 2024. Granted, Directive 8020 release in 2025 isn't exactly thrilling either, but I'm just scared that they'll go for quantity over quality. I hope you'll talk about Don't Nod's new game when it releases. Well, that's news to me, Tatjana. Thank you very much, because I didn't know that Don't Nod 
had another game in release but of course you know we'll check it out see if it's you know interactive and choice based but mate what do you think i mean we've obviously answered do we think there's going to be two games next year but i guess what i'd ask you off the back of that comment mate is would you want two games to be next year if you know it meant there was a risk for bugs and glitches and that um yeah, it's, it's a very good point, Tatjana. I agree, like like you say, The Devil in Me had its glitches. It wouldn't be a super massive game without any bugs here and there. Well, a DPA game, I must say. Um, so yeah, I'd rather quality over quantity. And if it is that they, they've they got Little Nightmares 3 on the go, they've got Frank Stone on the go, and they've got Direct of 8020, I wouldn't want the free games to be unpolished. I'd rather have just the one and then wait the next year for the next thing. So yeah, like um, I, I guess I'm with you in that one, Tatjana. I know I'm like we haven't had a super massive game all year, so it's almost really you know I am starved of it, and I almost selfishly want to say I want as many games as I can have as soon as possible. But yeah, I think you have to kind of put your logical hat on a little bit, don't you? And kind of say yeah, like I'd rather they waited a little bit if it meant it being more polished. I think as for me, like I think if they were to relate like release this Frank Stone game, like you say, sort of late spring, early summer, I'd be quite happy if they then release Directive 8020 early 2025. But again, I think that would be dependent on when GTA comes out, because if GTA comes out then definitely not. But do you know what I mean? I'm I'm almost predicting that if it's coming out in 2025 that GTA is gonna be towards like the later end of the year anyway. So I think that might be a healthy enough gap, but I think as well, another interesting thing, obviously we'll see more details, but also like how long this game's going to be as well. Like, is it going to be slightly more DPA based, like, you know, with four characters, so it's going to be that sort of four to six hours? Or are we, are we expecting like a quarry until dawn length where it could go as high as 10 hours? So we'll have to keep our ears to the ground as to what actually, uh, what how what the length is. For the casting of Frank Stone. But yeah, mate, have you got anything else you wanted to add? Uh, yes, just to say thank you to the 112, well, 110, because I think Jack and I put our votes in, to the 110 of you who voted and the 11 comments. Sorry we couldn't cover all of them, you know, time and fairness, I'm sure you'd understand. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much for voting, guys. Just, just stay tuned to the channel because anytime there's a nugget on any Supermassive Games content or news, you can count that we will be there. Fantastic. Thanks again from me for all the comments and all the votes on the latest poll. And uh, yeah, we will catch you next time. Bye, guys.